This incident was sent by a remittance warrior named Arif Hossein, who has previously shared incidents with us. He is currently residing in the Al Shahania area of Qatar, while his home is in the Danga Asnada village of Polash, Narayangunj district. The primary incident he reported involves his cousin, Aladdin, who had a few other individuals seriously affected by the events. Aladdin was known to be very restless and mischievous. He would become quite disturbed at night if he spotted coconuts on a palm tree, unable to sleep until he had stolen them. His antics went beyond mere mischief, he engaged in behaviors that were downright intolerable. For example, he would throw stones at people's houses late at night for no particular reason, causing shock and fear among the residents, especially if there were children or ill individuals present. This led to a notorious reputation for Aladdin, to the point where even if he weren't the one throwing the stones, he would still take the blame due to his established infamy. Another fearsome habit of his was to intimidate people by dressing in white clothing or other particular outfits, surprising them at night by standing in front of them or making terrifying noises from behind bushes. He derived a sort of thrill from scaring people, mistaking it as a reaction to some perceived grudge against him, which made it feel like a perpetual part of his identity. This relentless behavior resulted in significant distress for those around him, complaints always came in abundance at home and even with strict admonishments, there seemed to be no change in his behavior. One time, his friends, Abul and Farouk, came to him and said, Friend, let's play Jalabadi today. Jalabadi is a term used in the village to refer to a picnic. When he was asked, he replied, Yes, that's fine. No problem, let's play. There was a spot right in the middle of a field where they could cook and eat, essentially, a picnic area. Everyone brought along whatever essentials they needed, like rice, oil, and salt, from their homes. However, they didn't bring any firewood or sticks because they thought they could gather that from around the area. Many trees had dry branches lying under them, and it was winter, so there was no shortage of dry twigs. They began to set up their picnic. During this, one of them mentioned that, although they hadn't brought any firewood, there was no need for worry. They could easily collect wood from nearby rather than spend time gathering it from different places. He suggested they go to the nearby cremation ground, where there were plenty of logs lying around. A bull chimed in, suggesting they all go together. The distance to the cremation ground was quite close, only a five to six minute walk from Aladdin by his house. The three of them headed off and eventually reached the cremation ground, where they found a good amount of wood lying around. So they picked up those pieces of wood, and after gathering them, Farouk, who is with a bull, and both are friends of Aladdin Bai, called them from a corner of the cremation ground. He said, come over here, there are lots of sticks lying around, let's take them to another place where there are many sticks. Both of them, upon reaching that location, indeed saw that there were many sticks there. The wood appeared to have been burned but only half of it was charred, this means that when a body is cremated or burned, some pieces of wood left towards the end remain partly burned. Many people leave those behind and just go from the cremation site. They primarily went to the place where those partly burnt wood pieces had been discarded. At that time, since it wasn't raining, the wood was pretty dry overall. They collected the wood from there. This cremation ground is located on the west side of the Gananadanga market, beside the Shitalakshia River. The three of them together finished collecting and gathering the wood. After that, they used it for cooking. Once their meal was prepared, they finished eating. However, there were still many sticks left there. At that moment, a bull, who was also a friend of Aladdin Bai, said, Aladdin, there are still a lot of sticks left. I won't take these home. You do one thing, take these home. Hearing this, Aladdin was quite happy and said, Okay, I will take these. If they remain here, they'll go to waste. It would be better to take them home so we can use them for work. So, what did he do? He took whatever sticks were there and used some vines nearby to tie them together, then carried them on his head and happily walked back home. The kitchen in their house was a little distance away from the main house, and in the village, they saw the kitchen was like an attached kitchen similar to what they have in cities, but it was not quite the same as urban kitchens. So, he left the firewood he brought in the kitchen and went back inside the house. 
After entering, he told his mother, Mom, I've brought quite a bit of firewood today, can you use this for cooking? In the village, many people used to gather firewood in different ways. Back then, there wasn't much use of gas or gas cylinders, still, many in the village don't use them even today. Let's say this was about 25 to 30 years ago when collecting firewood was common. So, he thought it was a good thing to bring firewood home. He didn't give it much more thought. Sometimes, when he came home late at night, he would get scolded by his mother, but it didn't really help much. That's why his mother didn't ask where he got it from or what he brought. Then, Alad and Bai had gone to bed, and at some point in the middle of the night, maybe after midnight or around that time, a loud noise woke him up. The sound was as if large bricks or something similar were being thrown on the tin roof of his house from all around. However, only he could hear this noise, his mother couldn't. Terrified, he sat up and screamed. His mother came over and asked what happened because she couldn't hear any noise. She told him, I don't hear anything at all. Aladdin Bai insisted, I can hear this noise. His mother then held him close and whispered, don't be scared, my child, I'm sleeping next to you. She lay down beside him. Aladdin Bai mentioned he would go outside to see who was throwing things. Alawadin's mother said that since he hadn't gone out, there was surely nothing good outside, there might be something ominous. She insisted he should not go outside at all. Alawadin tried to venture out, but his mother held him back, saying he couldn't go out to see anything. Alawadin argued that he wasn't going to throw stones at anyone's house, nor would anyone throw stones at his. However, Alawadin's mother believed that a mother's intuition can often detect ominous signs regarding her child, and many think that Allah instills such perceptions in a mother's heart. So, she did not allow her son to go out, fearing something bad might happen. As the morning broke and the sun rose, distant sounds of shouting, crying, and commotion awakened Alawadin from his sleep. Everyone in Alawadin's household was disturbed by the noise, wondering what was happening. The crying came from nearby, and a group of people led by a bull and Farouk, who were Alawadin's friends, had returned to the village after a long absence. They had come roughly 25 or 30 years ago when electricity had not yet come to the village. After sunset, they had spent some time playing games and returned home around 10 o'clock or 10.30 p.m. Upon arriving, Farouk initially lay down to rest. Later, he went out to the washroom. As he opened the washroom door, an entity supposedly rushed out and struck him hard across the face, sending him tumbling back while he screamed in agony. His family ran to see what had happened, leading to the revelation that the incident occurred the moment he opened the door to go to the washroom. At that moment, Farouk reportedly said that he had seen a figure that resembled a human body, but with a completely bald head, meaning it had no hair, and heavy chains were attached to its neck, hands, and feet. It seemed that the figure's eyes were hanging down, you know how we sometimes say that someone's eyes are large, glossy, and red, that's not what it looked like. Instead, it seemed as if the eyes were drooping forward like long hair can hang down when it gets too big, appearing to hang down in front. This kind of figure had slapped Farouk, and after that incident, his condition worsened. While discussing the matter with family members, blood suddenly began to ooze from his nose and mouth, along with vomiting blood and bleeding from his ears. Within a short time, he was convulsing and died. What had actually happened and why it happened was something the family could not understand, they didn't know why the incident occurred so suddenly at night. On the other hand, Aladdin had gone to Farouk's house, struggling to come to terms with the tragic death of a friend. Meanwhile, cries of sorrow were heard from a bull's house, prompting people to rush there. Upon arriving at a bull's home, it was revealed that a bull's body had been found. Earlier in the morning, when a bull's family couldn't find him, they assumed he had gone out for some time, so the villagers hadn't thought much about it. However, with the incident regarding Farouk, now everyone's attention was focused there. In the morning, a farmer told a bull's father that he had seen something terrible, I saw your son is missing. This morning, I went to the riverbank to cut grass for the cattle near the cremation ground and came across a horrifying sight, a headless corpse. You should go there quickly, there are many people gathered. However, upon seeing the clothes that were worn, it seemed like this was a bull, your son. 
where did my son go? He hasn't been here since morning, and it's chaos. Quickly go, there are many people standing here. I was running to inform you about this. Meanwhile, upon hearing such news, a bull's father calls his mother. Both of them rush and indeed see that this is a bull's corpse. And where is the head? It's over there, next to the crematorium, lying against the wall, there was a rod stuck in the wall. It appeared that someone had forcibly torn off his head, as if cut off by something sharp, it looks like it was pulled off in one go. This kind of death, especially the way Farouk died, can be understood in one way, but a bull's death can be classified as a murder. The police are informed, and they arrive to handle not just one, but two abnormal deaths, taking the bodies with them, including the head from that place. The question arises, why did such an incident happen in one night? People remark, they were all friends. Now, Aladdin was untouched, but an incident happened to those two. What really transpired? Many people speculate that these three might have annoyed someone, leading that person to kill the two. However, if someone intended to kill them, they might have targeted just one. Who would kill Farouk? It doesn't seem like a human act. Again, some people suggest that perhaps they were wandering late at night and may have caught the attention of some malevolent force. Based on this assumption, everyone present starts advising the families of the victims to visit a religious leader. Why did this happen? Their state of grief is terrible. From Aladdin's family, someone goes to seek out a good religious leader on that very day. After the religious leader heard about this matter, he took some time to understand it. Afterwards, he mentioned that these three boys had gone to the cremation ground and brought back partially burnt wood. These woods were not meant for cooking, as many spirits work with these half-burnt materials in their own ways. However, the boys used them for a picnic and then brought the wood back home, which is why this incident occurred. When they brought the wood home, hundreds of malevolent spirits followed them from the cremation ground, disrupting their practices. These materials were an essential part of their rituals, and by bringing them home, they created problems for themselves. Initially, their target was to kill Aladdin. If he had stepped outside at that moment and heard the sound of something hitting the tin roof, the situation would have turned dire. Then they moved towards Farouk in a bowl, where they succeeded in killing Farouk while he was going to the washroom. They struck him with a slap, which caused a deadly blow that led to Farouk's death. A bull, on the other hand, was lured out of the house through some sort of illusion and was then taken invisibly close to the cremation ground. There, his head was severed, but there wasn't a single mark left on his body, only the head needed to be separated, and thanks to Allah's mercy, nothing happened to Aladdin at that time. His mother arrived quickly, and because of her, the mischievous spirits were unable to cast their illusion over him. Then the religious leader mentioned that Aladdin would not be safe either. I received information that the wicked spirits had said that a cow must be sacrificed, and all the helpless, destitute people of the village must be fed. Only then could they let Aladdin go, otherwise, they would not spare him and could even kill him. According to what the spirits said, Aladdin's family performed that task on that very day. Since Aladdin was quite troublesome and at risk of causing issues, especially after the tragic death of his two friends, his family decided to send him to Saudi Arabia. Aladdin has been in Saudi Arabia for more than 27 years now. He now regrets those bad habits and laments that he should not have been so mischievous at that time. He acknowledges that his behavior was excessive due to his age, but when one engages in excess, it often leads to a complicated situation which can adversely affect life. This is what happened to Aladdin, had he not died, his two friends died tragically. This was the incident, 